Hello and welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have back here with us Greg Johnson. Greg is CEO of Wellgreen Platinum. Wellgreen can be traded as WG on the TSX Venture and as WGPLF on the OTCQX. Thanks, Greg, for being back here with us today. Oh, it's great to be back. Greg, we spoke, we've been speaking over the past year about the PGMs. Uh, can you give us an update uh, on the current situation in the platinum group metals, uh, what's going on in South Africa, how that may affect, affect the platinum group metals, and what's going on uh, with Russia, how that may affect uh, you know, palladium? Uh, could you give us a little bit of an update on some of the things that we've been talking about over the past year? Yeah, you bet. I mean, it is a very interesting time right now in the PGM market. Um, you know, we've talked about in previous interviews this ongoing trend that we've seen in PGMs with, you know, increasing year-on-year demand for the metals, primarily going towards catalytic converters and the growth in the automobile market. And I think many analysts have been uh, uh, impressed with the growth and continued growth, particularly in the third world, uh, on the auto side. And that's been driving fundamental demand for PGMs, uh, combined with the fact that uh, since 2006 for platinum and since 2004 for palladium, we've been seeing falling supply uh, out of South Africa on the platinum side and out of Russia on the palladium side. And then here in just the last uh, three or four months, we've been seeing uh, strikes down in South Africa that have sidelined about 40 or 50 percent of global uh, platinum supply. So this has been you know, a really interesting time in the market. Uh, we've seen the palladium price respond to that and has moved up. And, you know, uh, the platinum market is also showing indications that it's making a, a major turn. And I think we may see it also start to catch up uh, with palladium, which has been leading it a bit. And another metal that Well Green Platinum is exposed to is nickel. Uh, nickel's had a, a major run in 2014. Can you talk to us a little bit about the nickel market? Yeah, uh, most platinum uh, projects co-occur with with often nickel and sometimes nickel and copper and some other metals. And our Wellgreen project is uh, is one of those projects that has a significant component. Um, you know, the upshot uh, at the deposit level is that that means your operating costs, uh, net of those co-products or byproducts, can be much much lower than just a a pure uh, platinum uh, project might have. Um, the the other element is that um, with the nickel market, um, up until you know very recently, it's been going through a bear market, probably kicked off in 2011. And on the supply side, um, a lot of new supply had been coming in from Indonesia in these lateritic uh, deposits that were being utilized as a, a lower price uh, form of of, um, of nickel. Uh, there was an announcement by the Indonesian government. Uh, three or four months ago, and it's been something that's been planned, I, I guess, for three or four years now, but a lot of market participants didn't believe it, uh, that they were going to curtail export of raw ores, uh, particularly uh, nickel ores, uh, to China. Um, they've stuck to that, and it's taken about 30 or 40 percent of global nickel supply off the market. Uh, and the market response since um, the lows in 2013 of around six, uh, $6 a pound nickel uh, we've seen the price move to above nine dollars at one point. I think nine seventy uh, a pound um, on the nickel market, which has really um, been an amazing move. In fact, I believe it's the uh, best performing metal in the uh, in the whole base metal and precious metal space. So, Greg, let's talk about well green the well green asset. How does a rising nickel and palladium and a platinum price? Uh, how does that affect the economics of this project? Yeah, so um, because our project is a polymetallic project, which means we've got multiple metals that, that co-occur, we get the benefit that when we mine each ton of ore, those, all those metals uh, are processed as part of a, a, you know, a flotation process to create a, a concentrate or, or even a, a high-value uh, PGM product that would be sent to a refiner. Um, and so in our particular deposit, um, depending on your waiting for 
uh, metal prices, so using longer-term averages today, if we look at our mix of metals, we would expect that the platinum, palladium, and gold would be our single largest component of our operating cash flow on the project, followed relatively closely by uh, the nickel uh, value that would come into the project, and then we've got an additional credit that comes in from copper and cobalt. So one of the real advantages of a project like this, similar to, say, a, a large copper-gold porphyry, uh, is that you, that mix of metals means that over the long life of your project, you're likely to hit multiple cycles uh, in the prices of either the precious metals or the base metals that really have a very dramatic impact uh, on your cash flow. Uh, for us, uh, if we continue to see uh, nickel price strength, it's adding uh, effectively uh, co-product or byproduct uh, cash uh, flow to the bottom line. And the move, for example, from $6 a pound nickel to $9 a pound would add as much as $150 million based on our 2012 PEA uh, straight to the bottom line. So it's a, it's a major uh, increase in the economics and value. And it, it demonstrates that not only are we highly leveraged to increasing prices for platinum and palladium, but that uh, these increasing nickel prices are very significant for, for well grain uh, as well on an economic basis. And then when you look at the juniors in North America that have the potential to be an open pit a platinum group a metal a nickel producer, it's very rare to find. Can you talk to us about... Uh, how well green platinum is quite unique uh, in the junior mining sector at the stage that you're at and uh, the asset that you have? Yeah, no, your point is a really good one. You know, the more well-known PGM development stories like Ivanhoe and Platinum Group Metals are both located down in South Africa. And those are those are going to be, though uh, it appears they're going to be able to use um, bulk mining methods because they're wider uh, zones than what are typically seen in the bushveld deposits. Um, they are still deep underground mines, so they require uh, the additional costs of extraction and, and investment into the capital in the mines. The real uh, thing that stands out on a project like Wellgreen is that because it is open pitable with the mineralization starting right at surface, it means that uh, our cost of extraction is a, is a fraction of underground mining costs and our ability to scale the project up by just using larger trucks and shovels uh, is, is excellent. Uh, you know, those are inherent um, advantages to an open pit operation. And so there aren't a lot of examples out there in the market of open pitable um, PGM nickel uh, copper systems. One good example that we often point to is um, the first Quantum Mine, who is a mid-tier producer in the space. They operate a nickel copper PGM deposit uh, in northern Finland, uh, which is very similar geologically to our deposit uh, and uses the same overall processing. And that project is valued by uh, the Canadian analysts that follow that at anywhere between 1.5 billion to 1.9 billion in NAV uh, for First Quantum in, in the assessments that analysts have made for, for that company. Uh, as an analog for our project, uh, our resource is uh, very similar in grade. We've got about twice as much uh, total resource currently uh, with the existing resource, which is going to be updated here uh, in the next couple of months. Um, and geologically and overall approach to mining is very similar. So we think it's, a, it's an excellent example of the kind of value potential that we could see on a project like Wellgreen once it's up and producing metal. And talk about uh, value creation. In the past, uh, you've been re releasing some drill results. Uh, most recently, you announced the, the Far West Zone, uh, some results uh, from the field program there. Could you go into some uh, highlights of that field program and what you were able to find uh, this season? Yeah, uh, so the results, uh, you know, the overall process that we've been um, you know, driving towards um, in our space of advancing the project to a greater degree of confidence in terms of your operating costs, your capital costs, the production levels, the resource size. You know, we're still fairly early days on that, and we're in that period of rapid growth where investors get exposure to a project that has, you know, real potential to continue to grow. Um, we've been releasing results since last fall on our ongoing um, field program, um, starting on the eastern end of the deposit and then just most recently wrapping up with the results from the western end of that uh, deposit that demonstrate we've got a system 
that's two and a half kilometers long of continuous mineralization defined by about 800 drill holes. Uh, we're getting exceptional results right at surface, um, zones that are anywhere from 100 meters wide right at surface to up to 700 meters of continuous mineralization. Uh, and the types of grades we're seeing are anywhere from uh, two grams per ton platinum equivalent grades up to uh, as much as uh, six grams or more uh, in terms of mineralization. So these are outstanding results, the higher grade material being similar to what they mine deep underground in, in South Africa. Um, so it's an exciting, you know, point in the development of the company. Uh, this most recent release uh, highlighted an area in the western end that uh, we have high grades right at the surface. So it may be an area that we will look at to um, look and see if we can start our mining process there. Uh, we're looking for this next engineering update to, to focus on a higher grade operation smaller scale in terms of the investment initially will go into the ground, but to still be a, a very significant producer. And in fact, we think that this project has the potential to be the largest PGM uh, producer in North America, perhaps surpassing Stillwater in, in, that, uh, in that level. Um, and we're quite excited about it. And as, and as you've already mentioned, it, it comes along with other metals such as nickel and copper that will also be significant in terms of keeping our cost structure very low, uh, likely one of the lowest in the industry, um, and, and making this a project that both investors and major mining companies are going to have a keen interest, uh, I think, in following. Greg Johnson, CEO of Wellgreen Platinum, which can be traded as WG on the TSX Venture, and as WGPLF on the OTCQX. Thanks so much for being back here with us today. It's really been a pleasure. Thanks for having us.